who scores a touchdown. Then back to pass. This is it. Touchdown right there. All right, and we seem to be having a few problems with the highlights here. So what we'll do is, is we'll come back off of this and uh, talk about some others here. All right, let's let's uh, let's head on now about uh, number two team, Union. Again, the final score there was 29 nothing. So uh, Roselle Park still in good form. Number two, Union, idle, uh, and they open the state playoffs on November the 20th. Steve? Our number three team, the Irvington Blue Knights, they were looking just to stay alive in Section 2, Group 4, and they ended up coming away with a 32-7 victory over the Scotch Plains Raiders. Now, Don Summers squad, a club which needed a win. They had to have a couple of factors go their way to stretch it out and win and earn a spot in Group 4, but we'll get later in the program to tell you whether they made it or not. But looking at the first quarter action, we have highlights of this game today as well. Orin Marshman, 41-yard touchdown run. Now, the senior tailback had a big day today. Had 89 yards rushing on 13 carries. He got the Irvington Blue Knights on the board. Mike Hankerson then sent a 21-yard pass to Tyrone Saab. As we see right off the bat, the boisterous crowd and the enjoyment there. The fumble that was off Aaron Cody fumbling. Orwin Marshman recovering. And Don Soma very, very pleased with his defense, but he's trying to stretch that defense. Mike Hankerson, though, looking and throwing Tyrone Saab, that basketball, football standout, taking it, hauling it in, 43 yards. Irvington goes up 20 to 7. And the Irvington crowd loving it up. Blue Knights, who improved the 6 1 and 1 on this season. A.J. Hughes blocks the punt. Actually, Corey Hardy, an outside linebacker, also in on that, and it's recovered in the end zone by Marshman for the touchdown. And Irvington celebrating and very happy. Get out of my way. <laughs> the Irvington Blue Knights coming away with the 32 to seven victory as our number three team wins today. Mike? No doubt about it. A lot of good things going on over there in Irvington and we'll find out where they stand a bit later on as far as the playoffs are concerned. Now Linden, the number four team taking on Westfield and it was in Blue Devil country, but. The Linden Tigers are a very strong team in 1993, and they pretty much had their way with Westfield. The final there was 34 to nothing. A big afternoon for a man named Jay Coleman. Coleman going over the 1,000-yard mark this season. It's something to be proud of for the Linden Tigers. He had an outstanding day, including 21 rushes, 160 yards, and four touchdowns, of which we will get to show you in just a moment or so. Now, of course, so when you take a look at some of the other stars in the game, uh, Wilson Rosenberg had an eight-yard touchdown run there, and uh, pretty much all the scoring was done in the first two quarters for Linden. The final, again, 34 nothing. Let's take you out to Westfield for some of those highlights. And, of course, the big man was Jay Coleman. Coleman getting the handoff here. He goes left, and it's a 15-yard touchdown run for Mr. Coleman. Now here's Coleman again. Still in the first quarter. Cuts inside, gets some good blocking here, and he pretty much finds his way through. Nicely done, 13-yard run. It was Wilson Rosenberg with the kick to make it 14-zip. Now, here's Wilson Rosenberg. His turn to score a touchdown instead of kicking an extra point. He takes the handoff, goes up the middle. He's got room and gets into the pay dirt area, and all of a sudden, Linden has stretched their lead. Now it's Coleman again, a two-yard touchdown here for number 32, strutting his stuff. Again, he's got four touchdowns on the day, and here comes number four for you right here. He's got over 1,000 yards, 1,047 on the season to be exact. Again, 21 rushes, 160 yards, and there you have it, Jay Coleman with an outstanding day. In fact, one of the top games in our area for Linden, a 34 to nothing winner. All right, Steve. Mike, our number five team, the Summit Hilltoppers, who clinched after six weeks of playoff berth. They improved to 8-0 this afternoon with a 49-0 victory over Kearney. Their junior wingback, Torrey Fogg, with a one-yard touchdown run, a 76-yard run, and a five-yard TD run. Jamie Allen with a four-yard run. Bob Bickle with a 21-yard pass from Allen. Ian Paxson, the fullback, with a one-yard run. And Rich Golden with a two-yard run. Torrey Fogg, 13 carries, 173 yards, and three touchdowns. He now has 19 touchdowns on the season for the Summit Hilltoppers, and we'll tell you about their state playoff situation as we move on. 
Our number six team, the Clifford Scott Scotties, now they were looking to held down a playoff berth today, and they came away with a 21 to nothing victory over West Orange. And the Scotties of Bill North at 8 0, and we'll tell you how they fit in as we move along in our playoff picture, Mike. All right, well, our number seven team, they're New Providence, and they were playing very well this afternoon as well. In fact, they picked up the shutout when they defeated Central by a count of 35 to nothing. New Providence 7 1 on the season. Central drops to 3 5. A big day from Scott Driscoll. 12 rushes, 77 yards, totaled 158 yards on the afternoon. Matt Bernhard, 7 for 9, 134 yards, and two touchdowns in that affair. Our number eight team, the Caldwell Chiefs. Now, Caldwell was eliminated after six weeks after they lost to Del Barton, 7 0, but they improved to 7 and 1 this afternoon. They defeat North Westside 30 to nothing. John Wakeley, who's had a big season, a 59 yard run. Brett Lanza with a 28 yard field goal. Mark Spelly with a 28 yard run. And the Caldwell Chiefs at 7 and 1 will not be in the playoffs in Group 2, but they continue their fine season with a 30 0 victory over Westside. All right, moving on now. It was number 9 Orange in action and a bit of an upset here. In fact, the only top 10 team to go down this afternoon. Lakeland was a winner of the final 29 to 14 over number 9 Orange. Although Orange had a great performance from Terrace Knight, 14 carries, 140 yards, and two scores. McCall Williams, just a freshman, by the way, folks, 11 tackles to by fifth. Rutherford played in the BCSL, and a big game it was because it knocked Rutherford out of the playoffs. That's right. They had to win in order to make it as an unbeaten team. They don't have enough power points. A tie has knocked them out of it. And there it is. Seacock is 7, Rutherford 7 in that contest. Steve. Mike, our number 10 team in our TV3, Tyler Maria, Coming away today with a 41 to 18 victory over Monroe. That's actually actually 41 18. That's a score we've seen at the Woodbridge game earlier today. But JFK comes away 41 18. John Crocker, the fullback, 24 yard touchdown run. He had over 100 yards rushing. And Shane Boykin also had 100 yards. And that'll close out our top 10. We'll take a break and be back with more of Scoreboards as the West Essex Knights. And as we move to the Iron Hills Conference action today, West Essex, though, can go for their 6 and 3 season. They improved to 5-3 and three this afternoon, coming away with a 28-14 victory. Mike DiGirolamo, a 27-yard TD run, got them on their way. And the Knights rolling between, behind DiGirolamo's 131 yards rushing, improving to 5-3. And, and Parsippany Hills drops to 2-6. And, and elsewhere in the Iron Hills, Morristown nailing down a playoff berth, 48-7 over Seton Hall Prep. Paramus losing last night to Livingston, 28-20. Randolph nailing down a berth, 35-14 over Columbia. Elsewhere today was Morris Knowles defeating Roxbury 19-9. Parsippany over Mount Olive, 34-13. West Morris over Hanover Park, 36-6. Last night it was Mendham extending their winning streak to 15 straight, 36-0 over Booton. And Morris Hills losing to Dover, 33-9. Not too many surprises except maybe for Rutherford, as we mentioned before. Uh, but what happens now with the rest of them? Well, let's take a look at what we have on this probable playoff projections. Now, the NJSIA will come out officially on Monday, but in Group 4, Section 2, Mountain Lakes at Roselle Park, Cedar Grove at New Providence. So that takes care of, that's actually Group 1, Section 2. That should be Group 1, Section 2, and that is set as we see it. And let's move on to Group 2, Hackettstown at Summit, Jefferson at Mendham. So Summit, our area team, clinching at the first seed. And North 2, Group 3, Orange, which lost today to Lakeland. They'll visit Morristown, the top seed. Morris Knowles, who moves up from the fourth spot to the third spot, they'll visit West Morris in Group 3 as we see it. In Group 4, Clifford Scott, undefeated. Bill Norwood's club will travel up to face John Bauer Jr.'s Randolph Rams, a perennial contender for a state playoff berth. Union at Elizabeth. Now, the swing game in that was Rowway beating Shabazz, so Elizabeth edged out Union. We projected at 78 power points to 76 for the Farmers. So those are your matchups in Group 4, Section 2. Moving on, Central Jersey Group 2, the JFK Mustangs. Now, they nailed down that top seed today. They're going to host New Brunswick with Princeton, the number two seed, as we see it, hosting Manasquan. In Central Jersey Group 4, Woodbridge, the Barons came up big today, and they'll visit Sayreville. The top seed who won last night, of course, over Edison. Edison still getting in, though, because Middletown North was upset by Manalpin, and Edison jumps into number three, and they'll visit Trenton. But Woodbridge, of course, our area team there in Central Jersey Group 4. Looking further on, Section 1, Group 1, 
Those Sea Caucus Patriots, now remember last year, they unknowingly used an ineligible player, and at 7-1, to were left out of the playoffs. This year, they earned their way again, and they're going to be in the playoffs. The Sea Caucus Patriots, we see, is the number four seed, and they'll visit Pompton Lakes. Wallington, who is undefeated, will visit Becton. Now, of course, Becton had edged out Sea Caucus earlier in the season in a one-point game, 34-33. So Sea Caucus, though, the Patriots will be in the playoffs as we see it in Section 1, Group 1. In Parochial Group 1, Immaculate Conception of Montclair, we see them going to Matter Day, Matter Day and St. Augustine, both winning today to move to 500 on the season. You have three teams there with 500 records, St. Joe's Hamilton earning the top seed in Parochial 1, Group 1, and that's our area teams, Mike, that are in the playoffs. And going into the, today, we had six teams in our top ten that had clinched. Mm -hmm. A seventh Clifford Scott could clinch with a victory. And as we stand now, we have several playoff matchups that are very impressive. Summit, which had a great semifinal last year with Jefferson, I would project them meeting them again in Group 2. New Providence, which now has a home field advantage with Cedar Grove. Some people think Cedar Grove has their best team in years, mm -hmm. and that'll be a great semifinal matchup. Roselle Park barely got by Cedar Grove in Group 1 last year. And in Group 4, you look at some great matchups with Union and Elizabeth, Randolph and Scott. Randolph and Scott, that'll be an interesting matchup. Again, we'd like to reiterate, though, that uh, they are based on power. We miss not to thank our great prognosticator, Art Polakowski of the Independent. So we hope some people are happy. Others will be uh, saying we should have got a point here. Number four, a lot of fun for them. Moving on next, it's C.J. Scott. Clifford Scott playing well. It's top ten. Of course, the Hilltoppers saw a couple of weeks ago with that. And a lot of fun to watch. Number four, the Tigers coming up with a, a very union. The Farmers hanging right in there. And we move now to number two. Mike, looking ahead on TV3, ahead on our view schedule. And we're looking up there. I know everyone should watch Time In on Monday night with Matt Laughlin when the official NJSIA projections come through. Matt will give them to you. Seven and hi, everyone. Andrew Gallo and Al Reynoso on hand for this Battle of the Oranges. First, Scott enters undefeated at 7-0. He needs a win today to secure a bid for the state playoffs. West Orange enters at three up and four down, and now they have a lot to contend with this afternoon. They certainly do. Clifford Scott is on a 